in the first scenario you are straight away giving the employee id value to oracle okay in case of second example you are not passing the employee the manager's employee id straight away in the query okay oracle will ask you the manager's employee id when it starts executing that query okay that time it will ask you the value for this specific placeholder okay now a question that would come now is why do we need this kind of a thing the bind variable or say a placeholder right now there can be scenarios wherein you are going to run this query for multiple managers right say now you want the details of all the employees for which the their uh, the, their managers employee id is like two then so for all the use uh, all the employees who are reporting to the manager with employee id three so on and so forth okay so what we can do in that scenario is instead of writing this query and changing the employee id every time like this and then this this so on and so forth instead what you can do you can write a single query like this where manager id equals to ampersand id and oracle will ask you to enter the employee id value the manager's employee id value at runtime so at that time you can just give the value as say two next time when you want to run the same query you just give three next time you just give it four so instead of having multiple queries you have got a single query right so what is the role of this this runtime area okay so uh, So the persistent area that you see inside this UGA, its job is to store all those bind variable values. Okay, so whatever values that you will be providing to Oracle at a runtime, all those values are basically stored inside the persistent area. Okay, so we see two important sub components inside the uga first is the runtime area which will be storing the query execution state information query execution state information again if i have to go back to this same query now if uh, there are going to be say 100 employees who are reporting to the manager with employee id 3 okay so it may happen that the query is taking some time to uh, return the result set to the user okay so 20 uh, rows are returned to the user then another set of 20 another set of 20 okay so for if for some reason oracle server is uh, running slow okay in that case i am saying okay so how many rows has already been returned to the user and how many rows are still pending okay that kind of information is going to be stored inside your runtime area okay if you have fired a query which is going to return say uh, a million rows now it is going to take time to return those million rows to to display those million rows to the user okay so how many rows has already been returned and how many rows are still pending those information are stored inside the runtime area and what are the bind variable values that are passed to uh, get the query executed those information are stored inside the persistent area okay now these two parts okay when we combine them they are called the private sql area okay so again it is like the hierarchy is like you have got the pga inside the pga you have got the uga the uga is it is having something an area called as the private sql area that private sql area has got two sub components that is the runtime area and persistent area now here again if you see 
the name of this component it is like private sql area it is private to that user okay no other user in the database will have access to whatever information that is present inside the private sql area okay are we clear with that uh, yes bro deepak yeah yes bro deepak hello yes bro. i am able to hear you shanmuk am i audible hello yeah bro we are audible hello hello yeah uh, i don't know uh, did you did you guys hear all this explanation about the private sql area yeah I, we did here okay fine uh, i don't know i wasn't able to hear you guys so uh, some problem okay fine hello okay so uh, so that is about the private sql area that is present inside uh, uga which is again present inside the pga the next component of the pga you are going to see is the sql work area okay now what exactly is the sql work area see the name itself it says work area okay so if say for example going back to this same uh, e example if i say um, where location equals to say mumbai order by okay so in this case let's say you want to see the list uh, list of all the user uh, all the employees who are reporting to this specific manager for the location mumbai okay and you want all those rows to be returned in a specific order in an ascending order or descending order which whatever you want okay. so what we are asking oracle server to do is not only return you the result set but you are asking to sort that data in a specific order okay we do that in excel right we we can we can put uh, some formulas and we get to see all the data in a specific order that we want so the same thing we are asking the oracle server to do we are saying that i want this set of data but sort it in this specific order okay so that sorting specific operation okay it is going to be taken care of in the sql work area okay so whatever queries the users are firing okay if they want the data to be ordered or sorted in a specific manner all that is going to be done inside the sql work area okay so that is about uh, sql work area not much complicated thing the next thing that you see inside the pga is the session memory again session memory it is a very small placeholder like it only holds the user's session information like every session that gets created in the oracle database it will be assigned a unique session id okay it will be assigned a serial hash there you will see what exactly is a session id and serial hash it represents basically every session uniquely in the database okay so all session related information is stored inside the session memory uh the next component that we see are like hash area and bitmap merge area 
they are also similar to some kind of uh, they, they will also come into picture for some kind of sorting operations okay wherein some uh, hash operation will be performed in the query okay so in those kind of scenarios these two memory components inside the pj will come into picture that is hash area and the bitmap merge area so these are the main components that we get to see inside the pga okay and the important thing to remember about pga is that it is going to be assigned for each and every user in the database whatever information that is present inside the pga it is specific to each and every user it is private to that user any other user in the database cannot access whatever information is present inside that specific users pga okay yeah. are you clear with that yeah yes sir so can you please repeat uh, about hash Deepak? and bitmap merge area hello any any doubts about uh, pga no. yeah 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 Sure. Can you please elaborate once again about hash area and bitmap merge area? Yeah, so what I mentioned about hash area and bitmap merge area is that they will come into picture in scenarios wherein some specific SQL operations are fired in the database. Okay. If the query is doing some kind of hash join, okay people who are aware about the join operators or joining operation in uh, sql they might be able to make more sense out of it okay so some of the other queries if it needs to utilize some kind of hash operation in the database okay in those scenarios this hash area will come into picture okay and similar to that we also have got bitmap merge area okay again merge is like kind of we different kind of merging operations you see in case of sql okay so these two will this hash area and bitmap merge area basically it will come into picture in specific scenarios when those kind of queries are fired in the database okay we as a dba don't try to control much about the hash area or bitmap merge area unless and until that is something crucial or critical for the application okay we don't normally we don't bother much about it okay are we clear with uh, that now deepak hash area yes. and area? Yes, okay 